In this video, we're going to talk about enthalpy of formation. Enthalpy is kind of a weird property of matter, but it's really important in chemistry when we talk about chemical reactions. Specifically, enthalpy is how we describe the energy change of a system during a chemical reaction. The reason enthalpy is so interesting, because if the pressure is constant, then the enthalpy change is equal to the energy that's transferred between the system and the surroundings in the form of heat and heat is something we can measure in the lab. So essentially, enthalpy is the heat transfer during a chemical reaction. First, why do we care about enthalpy of formation? Well, there are a lot of reactions that we can obtain the enthalpy experimentally using a device called a calorimeter, which is um, this thing right here. And you could view the video on calorimetry to see a little bit more of how that device works. Uh, essentially, a calorimeter allows us to measure the heat transfer between the, between the system and the surroundings in a constant pressure environment. There are reactions, however, that we can't perform in the lab, and so we can't directly measure the enthalpy, like this reaction right here, when graphite turns into diamond. It's a really, really, really slow process, and so we can experimentally and directly measure the enthalpy change. But we can determine the enthalpy change using an indirect method, and that's using enthalpy of formation. So what is enthalpy of formation? Well, we can define enthalpy of formation like this. The enthalpy that goes into or is released during the formation of one mole of a compound from its basic elements, with all of the substances being in their standard states. Now, what are the standard states? That's kind of an important thing to mention first before we start looking at enthalpy of formation a little more closely. Well, for a compound, the standard state uh, depends on the state of the substance. So, for example, if the substance is a gas, then the standard state is when that gas is at a pressure of one atmosphere. If the substance is in a condensed form, that is, it's not a gas, then we would just describe it as being in its liquid or solid state. And then for a solution, it would be when the concentration is equal to one molar. If we're dealing with an element, it's the form that element takes when the pressure is one atmosphere and the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. Now, when we talk about a compound, we're talking about something like water, H2O. And so water's standard state would be liquid because that's where we find it most commonly at standard conditions. When we talk about an element, we're talking about something like sodium, which is a metal at normal standard condition, conditions, so we talk about sodium being a solid. We could also talk about nitrogen, and nitrogen is found as a gas, and it's a diatomic gas, so it's N2, and so the element nitrogen most commonly exists at standard condition as N2. So let's look at an example of a chemical reaction so we can understand how these enthalpy of formations would be used to find the enthalpy change during a chemical reaction. So in this example, we have calcium carbonate that's decomposing into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Now to determine the enthalpy change for this uh, chemical reaction, what we can do is we can find all of the standard enthalpies of formation for all of the reactants in the products. Now these are all uh, generally in a big table and if you have a textbook for chemistry, usually in the back of your chemistry textbook there's going to be a table of all of these different values. They've already been determined for us. And so we can look up all of these values and we can take the total enthalpy of formation of all the reactants and subtract that from the total enthalpy of formation of all the products. Now an equation form that looks like this, where we represent the enthalpy change of the reaction with the symbol delta H uh, subscript reaction. And this little symbol here, that circle, that kind of degree symbol, that represents the standard states. And so we have sigma, which means the sum of all of the enthalpy of formations of the products, and then minus the sum of all the enthalpy of formation of the reactants. So let's look at what this question might look like if it was in an exam question or a textbook. It might say something like this. Limestone is primarily composed of calcium carbonate and de decomposes into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide under standard conditions according to the following balanced chemical equation. Calculate the enthalpy change when one mole of calcium carbonate decomposes. So to solve this problem, the first thing we need is that equation 
uh, to calculate the enthalpy change of the chemical reaction. And then the next thing we'll do is we'll look up in a table uh, all those enthalpies of formation. So this might be the sort of table you'll see in your textbook. And so what we can do is we can find all the different compounds here. So here's calcium carbonate, here's calcium oxide, and then here's carbon dioxide. And we can see the enthalpies of formation listed there um, in that column. And so let's go ahead and plug these into our equation and see if we can find the enthalpy change for this chemical reaction. So first I've listed all of the different uh, products here. So we have the enthalpy of formation of calcium oxide, enthalpy of formation of CO2. We're adding those together and then from that we're going to subtract the enthalpy of formation of calcium carbonate. And then we can go ahead and plug in the values that we got in our table to calculate the enthalpy for this reaction. So we've plugged everything in here, and notice that I added in these coefficients in front of each of the enthalpy changes. So here's the enthalpy of formation for calcium oxide, and I took this coefficient in front. Now they're all one, if you don't see anything that just means one, but you do need to multiply that by that coefficient, whatever's in front of there. So one times that enthalpy of calcium oxide, one, because we have uh, nothing there, so that's a one for, um, for our CO2 as well. And then we can subtract that from the enthalpy change of the calcium carbonate, which was our reactant. And we can plug that into our calculator and we get an enthalpy uh, for this reaction, an enthalpy change of positive 179.1 kilojoules per mole. So in this video we learned what enthalpy of formation is and why it's important. We then learned how to calculate the enthalpy change for a chemical reaction under standard conditions using the enthalpies of formation. Thanks for watching. You can support the science classroom by liking this video and subscribing to our channel. You could also support us on Patreon by clicking the link in the description or the link in the video.